Hey, what's going on everyone? Dominic, the Primetime Treasure Hunter here. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about and show you 10 different ways in which you can improve your photos and your listings on eBay and other third-party platforms so that you could increase the chance that you're gonna make that sale and make that sale faster. Now, I want you to think of the photos in your listings as like you're going on a first date or a first job interview somewhere. Think about it. Do you want to show up on that first date or to that first job interview looking like a slob or do you want to show up, you know, looking nice, like looking dressed up, looking professional if you're going to the job interview, you know, showing up with a, you know, with a little bouquet of flowers or some chocolates, you know, spray a little cologne on for the fellas, you know, girls maybe doll themselves up a little bit, you know, put a little bow tie on, a little, uh, a little hair clip. I obviously can't do that, you know, a little lipstick or something, you know, just, of, you know, looking nice because basically what's going to happen is that people are going to make inferences about you based on appearance. Now, that doesn't mean that's always the correct thing to do. That doesn't mean that's always right, but that's just human nature. That's how people are. So people are going to think if you show up, for example, you know, with the flowers, if you open the door up for some, you know, door for somebody as they're, you know, getting into the car or walking into a restaurant or something, you know, people are going to think, wow, this person is really thoughtful. You know, they're considerate and they're probably like that in other ways and with other people. So yeah, this is someone that I would want to invest in, in terms of a relationship, be it, a, you know, in a business, you know, or or something personal. Uh, so it's the same thing uh, with reselling, but a lot of sellers don't think about that uh, because you're not seeing the person. You know, it's something that's kind of hap happening abstractly. Uh, but, you know, it's important because when buyers are looking at your items and they're looking at your photos, they are making inferences about you, or at least many of them are. What's the main thing that they're going to make an inference about? Well, they're going to think, or a lot of them are, um, and make inferences about how you package and ship your items. That's one of the main things that buyers care about because after all, if they're investing into a product, they want to make sure that it gets to them without being damaged. This is really important for collectibles, for vintage items, and really for anything expensive. Doesn't matter what it is. It could be clothing, could be handbag, could be books, doesn't matter. Uh, you know, people want to make sure it gets them uh, intact. And a lot of people have had bad experiences. And so, you know, they try to guard against that. And, you know, one of the things that they do is they use feedback, but they'll also make inferences based on photos. So for example, if they see photographs of items in which the item is just kind of casually thrown onto a wrinkled bedspread with candy wrappers around it, you know, and cat fur and dog fur, you know, and your feet are in the pictures and there's all distracting, irrelevant things in the background that shouldn't be there and don't make sense, person is often going to think, well, this person's probably careless with other things that they do, probably careless with packaging, probably, you know, careless with how they ship the items out and stuff. And they just move on, they go on to a different person. What's the result of that? You have slower sales. So if your sales are slow, and even if they're not slow, if they're okay, but you want to improve them, these different techniques can really help you out. So I am going to share my screen with you here and show you different things. These are all items that I have listed in my store right now. Uh, so let's start with this. We're going to talk about the white background. The white background is very important. Now, if you're selling on Amazon, they pretty much want white backgrounds on everything. Now, eBay has a preference for white backgrounds. The search engine gives you a little bit of a bump if you have a white background on your item because they look for that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's always the right fit for you, uh, depending on what your item is. As you're going to see, because these are all examples of things that I have listed, I use a variety of approaches. And that's what I actually would suggest for eBay and for other third-party platforms besides Amazon, where they really force you into the white background, is really look your item and figure out what's the best approach for this one and have different tools in your toolbox that you can use. So for a white background, really the best type of item or items for that are ones in which you have bright, darker colors, uh, such as here, you see that there's these uh, bright and dark oranges in here. And also obviously we have the black and we have some dark red here as well with the lipstick. Um, and um, with the fingernails uh, as well. And so it, what it does is those colors off the white background 
it's a big contrast. That contrast makes the item pop. It makes it really stand out to the uh, buyer. Uh, and it also makes it look very professional as if it's something that's in a catalog somewhere sold by a professional business. And that's exactly the type of look you're going for. You want them to think that it's professional because you want them to think, hey, I'm dealing with someone who's professional. And what are you going to think? What's the input you're going to make if you see this? You're going to think, wow, this person really knows what they're doing. They have this stuff together and they're probably going to ship it out in a safe way. Now, that doesn't mean that they might not still message you and tell you, hey, make sure you ship it right just because of their bad experiences with other sellers, but still at least get them to make the purchase and look or look into it in more detail. It's going to increase your chance. Now, uh, how to set this up? There's multiple ways, but basically what you have to do is you have to lay your item uh, on to some type of white background. Now, obviously, right? But now what is the white background? Well, it could be a white table. It could be a big white piece of paper. It could be white oak tag. It could be white display boards. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to lay flat. It could be a flat piece. Like I have a flat dis white display board that I use, like a trifold uh, board. And then I have one that I'll also use sometimes up top if I want to rest it against the back. So I have it you know, basically going in both directions. Sometimes people will use a big piece of paper for that or a light box or, you know, a white wall. There's all different options. But then what you have to do is you have to shine bright light on top of it. So I use ring lights, LED ring lights, for example. Uh, I love using them. They're better actually than the fluorescent. Uh, I did a video review on uh, those ring lights. They're made by newer at my store and I would highly, highly recommend them so you could see them in the the link to those uh, are in my um, description section to those videos if you want to check it out. But um, and then basically we're going to use is uh, some type of background removal program that will give you a white background. And I like to use Photo Fuse, but uh, other people like different programs. Whatever it is that you like, uh, go use Photo Fuse is F O T O F U Z E. I did a video on making white backgrounds if you're interested. So just type that into my. Uh, YouTube channel, just type in white backgrounds and you'll you'll see it and uh, photo views is free. Now, as a bonus tip here, make sure you're using multiple angles. And one of the things I want to talk to you about is the 45 degree angle. That is very important because the 45 degree angle gives you a more professional look and it also gives more rich detail because it lets you see part of the other side as opposed to if you're just going completely laterally like this. You only see this part, but if you tilt it, you see a little bit more of the other side and you're not leaving anything out either. So it's a more professional look and it gives more detail. So you could see here, I'm going at both 45 degree angles here. I'm uh, you know, just doing different um, uh, positions as well. Sometimes you want to do that and also make sure that you're getting a, a look, uh, an image on the back of the uh, item too. So uh, remember, your buyer is not there to physically inspect the item, so make sure that you're giving them multiple angles. Yes, it takes longer to do. Will it sell if you just took one picture of this without a white background? Yes, it, it could. It certainly could. But this is going to increase the chance. Remember, we're talking about probabilities here. That's what we want to improve. We want to improve the probabilities of selling it and selling it faster. This isn't about whether or not you could sell it at all. There's plenty of examples of poorly pictured items that did sell. But again, that's not the point here. So let's move on to the second type of item, which is one in which a white background is really not going to work. And that's going to be for a more white item. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be a pure white item. Um, it could be a pure, um, a mostly white item that's mixed in with some other colors, or it could be like a light cream or a light yellow. Uh, in those instances, a black background uh, might be the better choice. And that's what I felt was the better choice for this ghost here. Um, even though it has some black in it, you could see here that doesn't necessarily mean you can't use it because it's much darker and it still contrasts with that. And even if you go over to the witch, you'll see that there's some white in her and the eyebrows and also in the hair. But since it's contrasted uh, off of the black in the, in the background or off of the darker face, it still works. It could still work with the white background. So it really just depends. So same thing here again with some of these blacks, but you know, it's, it's a really nice look and it really, again, you're looking for contrast. That's the key. Another bonus here is that I have this on a plastic display case. 
Uh, I've talked about that before, but you could find those in department stores or you know, a lot of times they'll just give them away. They don't need them anymore. And it just helps to elevate the item so it's not totally flat uh, on the bottom. And I like to use that for figures, figurines, uh, that sort of thing. Salt and pepper shakers, I use it as well. Again, here you could see use of the 45 degree angle. That might be an important thing. I haven't really focused on talking about that in a lot of videos in the past. So even for those of you who are with me for a while, uh, that's a new little tip I want to pass on to you. Um, also, you know, I like to do top-down views as well, depending on the item, and also give people a view of the bottom of the item. People like to see that as well, and of course, the back. Now, another thing that you're not seeing here really um, is the prep that went into doing this because I don't mean setting it up, and that does take some time, but you know, if your figure, your item has stickers on it, especially if it's a figurine, if it has dirt, dust, that kind of stuff, like if it's fabric, take the time to take that stuff off. That's, you know, having, think of it this way, having dust on your item or having stains on your item is like showing up to a date with, with dandruff or showing up to a date or a first interview with stains all over your shirt and pants. That's what it looks like. That's how you have to think of it. You got to get that stuff out of there, uh, especially if you want to, you know, improve your game, improve your reselling game and improve the rate of sales. Very, very important to pay attention to those types of details. All right. Now, the next type of item is one in which uh, this is a poster. It, it already comes in a board. Uh, Troy Shockley, by the way, from Mountain Man Treasures bought my uh, my other one of these. So thanks, Troy. Go check him out on YouTube and Instagram. He's awesome. He really knows what he's doing. And you can learn a lot from him, too. But um, I like to use a wood background for some of my items. And I like to use them for things like posters, things like uh, books, uh, things that people normally associate with wood. So like with posters, people would associate them with, you know, being framed. Um, a comic books, you know, a lot of times people keep some comic books on their bookshelf or they'll keep books, regular books on their bookshelf. So I like to have a wood frame around it. And why do people put wood frames around things? Because they look nice. They look classy. They look professional. And so you know, that's an option you could use. Now, I could use a white background for this, and that wouldn't be a wrong choice. Part of this does depend on personal preference, but you want to have different tools available to you in your toolbox that you could pull out and just use at different points. So for me, for my own personal preference and taste, I like the wood for this. And also as a bonus tip, sometimes make sure you're including something to give things a sense of scale and perspective, which is why I like to include the uh, ruler, for example, just to you know show people this is a bigger poster, 11 by 14. And by the way, if you like these types of posters, I have all sorts of vintage comic posters uh, in my eBay store, 19.99 free shipping. Uh, they are amazing. There's just so many cool covers, especially if you like Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman. I've got a ton of these things. They're cool. So check them out. Um, many of them I have in multiples. Uh, the next one here, I'm kind of teasing you a little because this is really what I want to show you is this. This is what I would call the zoom in. Okay. Now I use this a lot with postcards. Uh, Don, the auction professor, by the way, uses this technique with postcards and he really knows what he's doing. So, uh, you know, anything Don is doing, go check Don out as well. If you're, uh, if you haven't checked out Don, the auction professor, but, uh, uh, it, this is an amazing, um, uh, amazing technique. It's very effective because, the reason why this helps is that you have to think about what happens when people are scrolling through listings on their phone, you know, when they're when when they're on their desktop or their laptop or iPad or whatever, they're scrolling down and the the pictures are minimized. And so, you know, you really want to give people a, a a good look of what it is with that first photo so they don't have to make a lot of guesswork. And so, you could see here, this is what the whole image looks like. And a lot of sellers will will you know, get thrown off by this and think, well, I have to show the entire picture in my first uh, or the entire like picture of what it is in my first image. That's not necessarily true because look, if you do that, look how much white space you're going to have around it. Like that's just the natural space that eBay is going to put there. Instead, let's fill that up with this mobile guy. That's what we really want. So we'll put that right there. And now that's going to take up much more space. And then when the person's scrolling through, they see that they're like, oh, wow, cool. That's the mobile guy. That looks vintage. That looks old. It says so in the, in the ad there. It says 1984. They click on it. Then they could go see this in more detail. And then they could see the back and that sort of thing. So I like to use that too for shirts. Like you could see this is the broader view of the shirt. And really, if you look at it in the minimized way, like someone's going to see on their phone, like look to the far left right over, 
right over here where that where that hand is you can't even really tell what it is but if i make this my first picture now you could tell what it is so there's lots of items you could use this approach on people sometimes use this approach to get a zoom up on fabrics like there's a lot of people who sell ties that really just take a close up of the pattern and then they take a picture later of the of the bigger version of the tie so uh, that's a very important technique to consider too uh, another one is mannequin usage. And, you know, for certain items, you really do need a mannequin. I know everyone might not have one and maybe you don't sell clothes. But for those of you who do, mannequin usage is, is really important, especially for like a big overcoat like this. Many of you might remember me sourcing this at the estate sale earlier this year, this, this nice custom made pink wool jacket. Um, someone's probably going to get it soon as it starts getting cooler out. But this really would not look good just sitting on a on a hanger somewhere, uh, hanging off a hook. It looks much better. And as you can see, my first picture is not a straight on. It's a 45 degree angle because again, I think that's a more professional look to it. If they want the straight on look, of course, I'm going to include that and they could see that. And then again, I'm just taking different angles and different positions that they could see, including things like the inner lighting. That's a good little technique I use. All you have to do is take the item and just fold the sleeves back and you can get a nice uh, image of the lining right there inside and take some pictures of some other elements you think are important. This was personalized. It was personally made by somebody. A Pearl B. Settle was her name. You know, it's not a clothing line or anything. And then we have these really cool uh, buttons. So I made sure to uh, zoom up on those as well because that's a selling point for them. So, um, you know, just think about that mannequins and you want to make sure too that you have the right gender so that, you know, you're not putting, you know, um, you know, male stuff on a female mannequin. You want to make sure that it's looking right uh, so that you're going to, uh, you know, have a, you know, a, a, a better characterization and presentation of your item to your buyer. So mannequin usage is one. Another one, we'll get back to that photo in a minute, but uh, this is what I call my top down view of multiples. And I love to use this technique, as you know, with comic book lots. I love to use it with um, um, magazines. You've seen this with my Mad Magazines that I've done, uh, Mad Mag uh, lots. But I also will use them for books. And these are paperback books. So this is a big lot of 28 of them. And basically the point here is to overwhelm the buyer in a good way with how much they're getting. Because if they could see how much they're getting, they're getting a lot of something that increases the chance that they're going to spend more money uh, on the item, especially if it's a good you know, set that you have. And so as you can see here, I just lay them all out. Another thing I want to emphasize is that you'll see in my, in my listings is that, well, yeah, I put things at 45 degree angles, but when I put things straight on, they are straight on. They're straight. They're not crooked. People don't want things crooked. There's a difference between something that's crooked and something that's perfectly, uh, that, that's uh, purposely staged at an angle. There's a difference there. So you want to make sure things are straight when they are supposed to be straight. It just gives people a more streamlined uh, view. And remember, the human mind loves symmetry. It loves to see that. It likes to see evenness. It likes that sense of order. It's a more pleasing experience uh, for, your, for your buyer. And so also take pictures of the back. A lot of people will leave those out. It takes a little bit of extra time, not much. Uh, but it could be really worth it because a lot of people like to see the backs. So that's uh, crucial too. And then, you know, I'll go into taking photos of the more, you know, smaller amounts of books just to give them zoom ups uh, on, on these, uh, you know, so they could see it a little bit better for, uh, you know, each item. I'll usually just divide it into, you know, a certain number, like here I'm doing seven. So because there's 28 bucks, so four pictures of seven, one, two, three, four. And then this one here, which I gave you a sneak peek of before, this is what I call the stack up. So this is just stacking them all up. I'll do this with magazines, comic books, again, to give people a sense of just the scale and how much it is they're getting. I always say this, but if you want people to spend big money, what you usually have to do is you have to make what I call big money listings. So you have to take big money photos. That doesn't mean you're spending a lot of money on the photos, but you have to invest some time into it do a little bit of extra to make sure that they look right. Even here, you could see, you know, I've got these, you know, sets so that are nice and straight and they look nice and even. Okay. So, um, so that's that. Now the next ones I'm going to go over, uh, all have to do with staging. Okay. So now there was some staging involved in those other, in some of the other ones too, of course, but th this is more of an emphasis on staging. So you see a white background here. That's true, but that's not what I want to point out with this. This is the set of, uh, 
of 12 Super Mario Brothers toys. There's 11 plush, and then there's one question block, as you can see on the bottom. And I purposely designed it this way to set it up, to stage it. So who's the main character in Super Mario Brothers? Super Mario, right? So we want him centered. Um, we want him jumping on top of the question block there because he'll do that sometimes in the game. Sometimes he'll be under it, but obviously we can't do that here. So he'll be on top of it. And it looks like he's jumping off of it as he will do in the game. So it's perfectly staged that way to give a sense of action to it. Uh, and then who's his brother? His brother is Luigi. So I purposely have him next to him because it's just a natural pairing. People, you know, think about that. They like to see, hmm, this is natural. This makes sense that they'd be together. I don't have Luigi all the way at the end. And then you could see I have the toadstools uh, together right there. You know, the mushroom looking characters, they're all together. And one is uh, standing on top of another right there. You know, so um, you know, I've got things grouped in ways that make sense. You know, I've got uh, more kind of like reptile -y characters together here, like Yoshi and, um, you know, Bowser uh, Jr., you know, they're together. So, you know, and I've got some greens together over here as well. Now, keep in mind, here's another example of how you could use white in a white background, but that's because it's contrasted off of the green and the red in the background there. So, um, also, you know, just like I did with the books, you know, there's lots of similar principles that go through what I'm trying to do here, as you'll see, even though they're different items here, I'll give more of a close up, you know, of basically one half versus the other half, but you know, same thing here, you know, I'm just, the first picture is really to try to get, you know, as much of that, uh, try to get it all in there and try to stage it properly. So it's a pleasurable viewing experience for the buyer. And then also just like flipping the books over on the back, get a picture of the back as well. On uh, the next thing, and this is something that Mrs. Primetime uh, put up, is this Kate Spade adjustable leather crossbody shoulder bag. And, um, you know, it's an expensive item. It's a $200 uh, purse right now. And, um, you know, we, we thought about, okay, just hanging it off of a hook, off of a, um, you know, a, a nice looking metal hook, off of a, a wooden door, which would have looked okay, but you know, this is something, an approach we thought looked much better. And this is, you know, just setting it up nice with some, you know, some nice looking vegetation behind it. And then having like a little, um, you know, like a little uh, underneath aspect to it where we've got these stripes, you know, it's like a nice cloth and the colors you know, sort of match what you see in the bag there. And then of course, you know, giving it, you know, just different views um, here. You could see again, making use of the 45 degree angle. You know, you can see nothing in there really looks sloppy or dirty or anything. While there's stuff in the background, it's not distracting. It's stuff that looks nice. You know, it's stuff that, you know, makes it more visually appearing. It's not like just some random background, give a little, giving a little peek inside. This is something you'll see done a lot on Poshmark, for example. Um, if you remember the um, the store review I did for Amanda at uh, Garment Brokers, uh, uh, page on Poshmark. She does a lot of this. So if you want to see an example of that, go check out her page or go check out that review. But it's another thing, another approach to use, and you can use this effectively uh, on eBay to sell items. Uh, the last one, and this is one I, I crack up at, and Mrs. Primetime laughs when I do this because uh, it's just, I wait for the exact right time. It has to be a nice, bright, sunny day. And as soon as it happens, I grab you know one of these religious statues or figurines that I have and I purposely set them up in like a nature type of background because I want to give it like an enchanted kind of spiritual look because that's the uh, experience. Remember, you got to think of experience. That's the experience that the, the, the buyer is most likely going to want to have when we're talking about religious items. And I'm not talking about a, a Bibles and books. I'm talking more about, you know, figurines that people want to display. I purposely set it up this way to have the vegetation in the background like that. This is just taken right off my deck. Um, I, I purposely have some of the sky in there. So some of the blue matches a little bit with her. Um, and also just having some sky in there too is just nice because it you know, gives more of a nature feel to it. Um, you know, but that's important. I use it a lot for these um, statues, religious statues. Again, I do the 45 degree angle in both directions. And then obviously the most important features here are the face. And so I'd like to make sure I get a close-up shot to just emphasize the, the facial features here, um, you know, to, to just really, really bring the buyer into it, almost as if they could practically touch it. And that's another advantage of making things bright and clear, you know, and so they pop almost to the point that they feel like they 
are coming practically off the page. I mean, right there, look at that shine on it. I, again, purposely waited. I was walking. I had this sitting around for a while. You might remember even when I sourced it. I was waiting for the right day with the right sun coming down. And I went, I grabbed my stuff. I ran outside. Miss Pride Time's laughing. And I'm sitting out there snapping these photos. And um, the one that these are all things I told you that, that I currently have listed, but this is one that actually just sold last weekend. And uh, Miss Pride was really cracking up about this one because I purposely uh, angled it. So I got the beams of light shining down on St. Teresa of Avila right here. And uh, this sold literally within hours for 50 bucks. So you might remember me sourcing this at the same sale. But I really think that having those beams of light coming down gave it kind of like a heavenly aspect to it. And you could see how I have it staged so that she's literally looking up at the beams of light as they're coming down. And, you know, I have that going on here. Um, but it's more effective when she's actually looking up at it. So... Uh, those are all different techniques that you could consider and that you could use. I would like to know uh, in the comment section which technique you felt was the most helpful. If there's other techniques that you use that you would like to share, uh, I'd love to know that as well. A lot of people read the comments and learn things from it. So hope you like the video. If so, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as we try to race towards 20,000 by the end of this year. I don't know if that's possible. But it's only going to happen with your continued support. I thank all of you who continue to support this channel and watch it grow. Thank you very much. And I'll see you back at the next one, everyone. Take care.